Hello. Okay. Hi, guys. Uh, we're live now and welcome to the kickoff day of uh, uh, the Monster Challenge 2020. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. My name is Maria JD. I'm the challenge host and our Heroes podcast host. So that's how some of you could know my name or face. And I'm here with uh, Marlon Nunes, who is uh, uh, meeting us here for... Um, the first workshop of the challenge. Hi, Marlon. What are you drinking? Hello, Maria. Yeah, so I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> Just trying to get warm up for the challenge. <laughs> it does not me. look like a coffee, Marlon. You have to prove it now. <laughs> okay, fine. Now it looks like a coffee from a short cup. <laughs> okay. You've got a lot of explanation today. Anyway. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, guys, we've got a lot of ground to cover, but uh, uh, first and foremost, thanks everyone for uh, coming to the challenge for registering. Actually, just before uh, the uh, the kickoff of this workshop, I was just double checking how many challenge participants we've got, and we're like, uh, I think, fifty people short. Uh, 1000 so or or even less than that so almost 1k participants i'm sure we're going to hit a thousand so that's a lot a lot of people and uh, thank you very much everyone so uh marlon um before we actually dive into a uh, zbrush and everything uh -huh. i wanted to make sure that everybody knows who's who you are so maybe Actually, um, can you quickly introduce yourself and just say sure. what you do and, you know, things like that? Um, can I pull your art station up, meanwhile? Yeah, go ahead and just can discuss over the art station. Uh, okay. It's mostly personal work, but also like uh, some of the last professional work that I have. Oh, yeah. The last, the, last the last one was this Jason that you just published recently, right? Yeah, so uh, so all of you that don't know me, so I'm Marlon Nunes, so I'm, um, I'm one of the co-founders of Art Heroes as well, and I mostly work doing digital humans, that's pretty much my specialty. And uh, I'm pretty much known from doing likenesses and doing faces, that's pre pretty much where my big passion is, that that's why the reason why you don't see so, don't, so many monsters, is because I, <laughs> I, so I'm obsessed about faces. That's, but uh, but the cool thing is that uh, on on top of all of this, everything is just about zebra. So everything that comes from exploration, I'm I'm very very keen on that. In fact, for the last years, also I, I was helping zebra on the beta. I was helping Pixelogic develop the software as well. So I also created a whole bunch of like a test for zebra as well. And and yeah, I'm, I mean I'm pretty much just a digital sculptor like uh, like on top of everything. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much an introduction about myself. All right. Thanks for the intro, Marlon. And uh, just out of curiosity, actually, um, how long, like, I'm sure that everybody would be, like, curious, how long did it actually take you uh, to uh, just pick up the skill and uh, get it from, you know, making a sphere or being able to make a sphere or open a sphere to, yeah. like, I don't know, making Jason? I think um, I, mean, I have. I think I have shared my work when I started because I started ZBrush in two thousand seven, and obviously it sucked big time what I was doing back then. Um, I think the first time I was kind of fine about what I was doing was two thousand ten. So I'm talking about three years sculpted. Um, at the beginning, it's very annoying because you really don't get anywhere. But I think one of the things that I told everyone that. Um, at the other days of a regularity, so you just pretty much just grab the software whenever you can, and hopefully even every day. So that's uh, I think that's the major the major point. Um, it's not so much about how how fast you can get into it, but mostly be able to enjoy the the whole journey because the journey is I mean it can take some time till you are sculpting at certain level. Just I mean just take it as a passion because we all artists we just love art, we love love drawing, we love sculpting as well, obviously. So just 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 take it as a journey, just enjoy it, and you will see. It shouldn't take too long. As as long as you as you enjoy it, it should be fine. All right. Okay. So um, and uh, um, 
what's your, you know, besides faces, I know that you're really into uh, stylization and yeah. uh, making stylized girls. So that's kind of, you know, your second uh, signature destination. Um, yeah. So how, like, yeah. What is that even? <laughs> Yeah, so I think one of the things that I want to focus also today in the sketching is about forms. So one of the things that I really like, and I've been always passionate, is about certain type of cartoons that I was watching when I was a kid. Um, and most of the time, all of that is present in very simple forms. So um, part of the stylization that I do tend to be slightly more, more simplistic sometimes. Uh, obviously, uh, most of the time it's human related. Like for example, this girl that I that Maria is showing that I did for the ZBrush Beta. And I try always not to like uh, give so much ornamentation or trying to make so much complexity out of it, but mostly it's about giving personality. And you give personality to anything just by forms, just focusing on the volumes. And that's pretty much the same argue, the same like a uh, um let's say uh topic that every single artist or sculptor is going to tell you that everything is not about the details, but mostly just about forms. So uh, today, actually, on the sketching session, I'm going to talk about it. And uh, if you guys want to see more of my work in stylization, I also did a, a, a course here in Our Heroes that I see stylized, stylized characters, where I'm explaining pretty much how to develop a whole character from, from zero to hero, literally from a sphere. So that's what I will try to kind of do during this week. I will try to sum it up and try to do it even more simplistic, just to make sure that, especially for those who are starting in ZBrush, you get you guys get get inspired, and not only that, you get you guys get motivated to make sure that you are able to do it. So, um, so yeah. We've got a few people asking questions. So, guys, please feel <laughs> free to ask questions. <laughs> Uh, because uh, I'm just going to be pulling them up for Marlon. So Peter is asking if you're doing the challenge. I guess the answer <laughs> is yes, but uh, Marlon actually has three hours, meaning today, Wednesday, and Friday. <laughs> I, don't I mean, I, I'm doing the can challenge. can allow him to compete, though. He's a no, jury. I'm not, I'm not going to compete because I'm part of the jury. <laughs> so for, for me, it's mostly to explain the process, mostly so for everyone to be able to finalize their characters we have a deadline the, dial the deadline is very tight so me myself well me myself <laughs> me Daniel, and martin we are going to be pretty much helping you guys over this week or the course of this week to kind of give you you know uh, all the tips and whatever information you guys need from us so you are able to finalize on time that's the most important yeah that you have a no good i look agree monster yeah. creature by the end of the week yeah, I think the whole point is just actually also having fun. And uh, it's really amazing yeah. seeing like that many great artists in the challenge community. So it's like, thank you guys all for sharing your work. It's, I'm like, seriously impressed by people who want to push the boundary and starting from zero, but also like actual like professionals with absolutely amazing levels. So it'll be an amazing competition, but also an amazing exploration of what can be done, right? Within pretty tight deadline. I hmm. guess that's the point. And uh, um, as an important reminder, before I let Marlon take uh, the stage, um, like, um, guys, we're going to be running giveaways every day. And uh, every day there will be a little homework also to give this a little bit more structure. So every day we'll be posting homework in the unit section of the uh, Facebook group. So go to the unit section in a bit. Our team will post an assignment and you will um, you will be able to post your um, assessment, like your uh, homework. And uh, we'll be doing a giveaway. So today uh, we've got actually a pretty cool um, like prize. So like this is the cap. Oh, actually, Marlon is wearing the same cap. What a surprise. <laughs> so um, the second cap will go uh, to just a random somebody who is now here in the uh, in the audience. So we'll grab a random name in about one hour after Marlon is done with the workshop. And uh, I'll make sure that this cap is sent your way. So um, that is kind of, you know, um, a little reward for all of you listening to uh, Marlon. Marlon, are you going to be boring? Uh, if I'm going to be what? <laughs> boring. 
Boring? No, I hope not. I mean, it's one hour. If you can be boring <laughs> one hour, two hours, I can definitely. One hour should okay. be fine. Okay, guys, now you all know that if you listen, if you know there is Marlon's workshop for two hours, then you'd better not come. Okay, so hi again, everyone. And Marlon, so what's the plan? Can you give us an update of, um, you know, what's your plan for uh, today's for session? Today. Yeah, Should yeah. I start sharing my screen or something? Um. Well, it's totally up to you. Let me just unshare your station. Um, yeah, sure. Share Go ahead. Screen. Share a screen. Which window I should share? It's screen one. There you go. Uh, and oh, meanwhile, yeah. I'll just answer a few questions. Um, so beginners and advice share the same live stream. Yes, guys, you're all on the same live stream. And there is like this session is actually pretty beginner intermediate. And then... Um, uh, sorry, there is a pretty beginner, uh, it's rather very than very beginner, intermediate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then, um, we'll have a mix, we'll have a mix of different things, and we'll, um, we'll start complicated, yeah. uh, during the week, definitely. But today, yeah, yeah, beginner. yeah, I'm sharing my screen, I don't see the screen still on the there you go, no, it's fine, yep. Now it's here. Okay, guys. So enjoy Marlon and keep posting your questions and everything. Okay, you, 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 you update me about the questions, right, Maria. I'm gonna, gonna just be pulling the them. Time. I'm gonna be pulling the most, uh, you know, relevant ones, and then we will answer the remaining ones. Okay, guys, um, enjoy All the right. stream and post your questions in the chat. Um, by the way, everybody hears and sees us. Okay, give us a lot of thumbs yeah. up so that we know that you are alive. Yeah, let me know if you can you can hear me because otherwise, <laughs> such a lot of time, huh? <laughs> so let us. Yeah, let me know. Okay, uh, I think yes, I start seeing. Yes, so put us something like any reaction, like, uh, I don't know, okay, or whatever. Um, yeah, 1,000 questions also, okay, fine, start start posting them. Okay. Cool. All right. So yes, awesome. Thank you, guys, for all your reactions. Yeah, let's keep this energy up, Marlon. Uh, i leave you here. Okay, cool. Thanks, Maria. All right, guys, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about sketching. Uh, Sketching, as you guys obviously know, is about exploration. So, uh, sorry for you that already know how to work ZBrush for the most advanced, uh, you know, artists that are here. This is going to be more beginners because I, I want to really be able to approach uh, any character in a more simplistic way. As I said before, uh, just regarding forms. All right. So for that, I was trying to think about what what I can do for the challenge, something that I can really develop within three hours from zero to hero, and I just thinking pretty much about the kind of stuff that I used to like when I was a kid. So uh, I don't know if you guys uh, remember, I'm sure you guys remember like cartoons like a Samurai Jack or maybe in Cartoon Network you have like a foster house, with obviously a bunch of monsters or, you know, this kind of stuff is the kind of stuff that I used to like when I was a kid. And all of, all of that has something in common and is, is the simple shapes, very simple forms can describe a full character. Um, and also, like, I, I was just get, uh, getting a whole bunch of reference that I could gather online. Um, let me just talk quickly how, how I normally do it. Uh, I really recommend you guys to get into Pinterest because normally when you get into Pinterest, one idea will get you to a different idea, which will bring you to a different idea. And most of the time, you can just, in just five, 10 minutes, if you guys don't have enough inspiration, you will be able to gather all these, all these, you know, reference in no time. And then I pull everything in one software that is called Pure Ref. Um, it's free, that's a cool thing. And here you can have your own mood board. So I just started gathering a bunch of references, obviously characters that are with very simplistic shape. And eventually I kind of thought I want to make something cute and slightly ghostish. So I don't know if, well, of course that's a stupid question. Of, co of course you have seen uh, Mononoke Mono Princess. So if you remember the forest spirit, um, oh, yeah, the forest spirits, all of them are like a very simplistic shapes, uh, but they have like a, this ghost illusion and this kind of, um, they, they feel very naive. They feel very naive within their context. So I wanted to create something similar to that. So I want to create a, a, a character that is not exactly like a scary, but mostly like cute, but it's going to be towards more like a spirit rather than uh, like a, like a death monster. But in any scenario, I want, I want to be able to keep certain like monsterish like uh, elements, like for example, uh, the, the, the zombie eyes somewhat, you know, all these glow elements. 
Uh, this one is very cool. I really like this this coastish Fresnel that it has the the material. You know, uh, here I'm just gathering re references from different animals just to see how the shapes are worked. So the cool thing about this software is that you can have all of these in one shot. All right. So with Marlon, all of this, I'm just going to interrupt you um, yeah. because we had one relevant question, and I'm going to yeah. pull it up again. Uh, when stop collecting references? There was a question from Nitin. Yeah, well, I mean, th there is no really an answer for 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 this one because um, you will stop uh, as much as as you need. Uh, to be fair, like uh, for every single character, there are two processes. One is the references, and the other one is exploration within ZBrush. So, so it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you're going to be doing whatever you want within ZBrush. You're going to be exploring forms. That's what I'm going to do now. So, as you can tell, I did I didn't gather like like tremendous amount. You can get crazy on this, but it really took me all of this just around like 15 minutes, really just going around Pinterest, someone, something in Google, you know, like very simplistic. So don't, don't, don't get too crazy though, but it's as much as you want, really. Um, all right. So for all of you that know ZBrush, so I'm going to start a slightly, um, you know, like slightly slow here, but for all of you that don't, don't know ZBrush, just pay attention. So. Uh, this is the software, right? So we're going to use one of the methodologies that I already described during the course that I did for our heroes, the stylized character course. I'm going to be using very similar methodology. That is, everything can be break down in simple forms. And by, uh, by very basic forms, I mean stuff like, for example, cylinders, like, uh, you know, cubes, spheres, this kind of stuff, all right? So I'm going to keep everything like a very, very simple from the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to get started from a sphere, make polymesh 3D. That is one of the big questions always. I'm going to press X to make sure that I have the symmetry on. And right now, uh, you guys cannot see the, the mood board. I put it in the second screen because I don't want to have the pictures here on the on the ZBrush. I just want to have my mood board in the other screen. And I'm going to start sculpting my, my ghosty rabbit, okay? So I'm just going to make sure that I'm able to see it. Cool. All right. So. Uh, in terms of, of of the technique that we're going to be using, I'm going to start from a sphere and then I'm going to uh, start adding more elements as long as I need them. So right now I'm just going to focus on the face. I want to create some type of rabbit school. So for the for it, I'm just going to use my move brush. At this point, uh, when I'm sketching normally, I normally only work with a move. I don't try to get too crazy with like a different type of uh, like brushes. Uh, some people start playing with clay, clay brush, or even the build up. I personally not so much fan on it. Um, I really like just playing like a very, very small, and by that is pretty much just moving vertices, like a very, like, like an old style type of thing. So that that will allow you to mostly not subdivide. So I really encourage you guys for the sketching period, don't subdivide unless it's completely needed. So keep things very simplistic. So I'm just going to check my mood board here, and I'm just going to kind of starting getting something slightly cutish. I'm going to append now a cube. So I'm just going to rotate it, press W to make sure that I'm able to see the gizmo. I'm just going to scale it down and I'm going to make one of the teeth here. So I'm just going to scale in one of the axes, make sure it's something like this. And I'm just going to duplicate control and then I'm moving one of the axes and then I got it, okay? So as you can tell, you pretty much can already tell how what animal I'm talking about just by very simple, you know, very simple moves. So now, the most important is that during this sketching, we, we don't go into detail, but mostly we give a very some personality to this character. Um, it can be small, it can be more like a monsterized, or it can be more cute. I, I, I wanna go more towards the cuteness type of thing. So. I'm going to start working with all of that. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start even playing more with this. Oops, make sure that I have the brush. I'm going to play with this, and then now I'm just going to start sculpting a little bit of a tiny nose. I don't know if you see, guys, but I have now my, my stroke turned into purple. I'm right now using the my damn standard. And that's the reason because I'm using the Sculptist Pro mode. So by that, what happens if I show my polyframe, if you have this on, you will be able to add polygons on the spot. So sometimes it's very useful, other times it's not. In this case, since I want to start already, kind of give some shape to the nose, I want to have it on. So I'm going to leave it on for now. And then I'm going to just start giving a little bit of 
tiny, you know, tiny pressure here. So I'm able to already see the character. Obviously, here we have some quadif quadri say quadrification. You see, still, you still can see the quads, right? So I just kind of smooth it out a little bit. Obviously, the topology is going to be more. But it doesn't really matter. At this point, it's just fine. Okay, so uh, this Marlon, is like a quick a, question. Yeah, quick question ahead. from Diana: uh, Do you activate Dynamesh from the beginning? So th this is the thing. I normally don't work with Dynamesh as as, as much as I did before. So at this stage in, during the sketching, Dynamesh would be the last thing to 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 start working on. Um, so at the beginning, I don't. So normally when I need to extend my my mesh or this kind of stuff, I just literally just pull. Sorry, I just normally what I can do, I just probably can use the snake brush, for example, with my sculptures Pro mode on, and then I can add whatever I want and still having, unless I need to really merge two different meshes, I can use Dynamesh, but I normally will try to keep it simplistic during the sketching. Um, maybe if we have time, I will Dynamesh just at the end, but I think at this process during the sketching, I want to keep everything in separate subtools for sure. I'm going to also reply one question. Uh, Daryl is asking or actually commenting that the comments are at Facebook. Um, at this point, we are grabbing comments from all over. So guys, no matter where you are watching this streaming, um, today we can see your comments and uh, we're going to reply all the questions. So I, I see all the comments here and Marlon will see all the questions. So no worries at all about that. Um, yeah. Sorry, Marlon. Oh. You're back no at worries. it. All right. So even even if the if this guy is going to be like a ghost, I want to keep certain elements just artistically, just because you know. So one of the things that I really want to do because of the reference that I was gathering is that all of them you still can see a little bit of like an eye eye shape, like the zombie type of thing. So I just want to keep this type of floating eye just just because. So I'm going to keep some floating eye right now. And I'm just going to my Subtool Master that you guys can find it here under Subtool Master, okay? This one here. And then you can click Mirror. I'm just going to mirror the, the eye to make sure that I have both eyeballs in the X axis in the same Subtool, boom. And I'm just going to use my eye material. There is the Art Heroes eye art material that you guys can find on the web. And then I'm just going to apply some type of coolish color or something like that this for now, something like this for now. I'm going to fill it in. And then let me just come back to my school, get the Art Hero Skin Blend material. And now I'm just going to play with this type of color, fill it in, and then this one fill it in as well. That pretty much to fill it in is color fill object. It's just that I have everything through shortcuts. Too, so you guys will know which shortcuts you use the most. So try to get used to your shortcuts as much as possible. You guys have your keyboard. So, you know, like, a, just, just, you just get crazy. You have plenty of keys everywhere. So just get crazy and just put shortcuts everywhere. Uh, so Marlon, that's what uh, I do. Can you pull oh. the reference image again? Um, sure. A few people are asking just maybe to quickly show it. Sure. Let me just put it here. There you go. This is a little sketch that I did like yesterday, just, just trying to figure out where to go. I personally didn't like the battery, but you get you get the the vibe of it. You get like a, there's some few logos that I found. They're super cute, and they still have this goatish feel with a school shape. And mostly, I'm trying to focus within within all of this, like uh, this type of aesthetics. I love this type of aesthetics. I love this glowness. Maybe some four I can add at the end. I will see like four like you know breaking the shapes, the silhouette. Uh, but I'm going to focus mostly doing that. And and by the way, there is also like uh, these tiny creatures you know, that I normally like. So I will see if I'm able to grab like a this type of elements where even if the creature is very small, it has a lot of, you know, personality, you know, it's something I really like. I will see if, if I'm going that direction or not. So what, what we can do is just, I can just pull this uh, pure ref mood board that I just created and we can upload it later. So people can also watch it. Uh, for the next time while I'm detailing or anything. I think that's actually so a great idea. We're going to do that, yeah. guys. So no worries. Okay, I'm going to we pull will, it uh, out. Yeah, we'll just upload it to the Facebook group of the challenge and uh, and email this to you together with uh, the replay uh, tonight. Yeah, let me just make sure. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm here right now. 
to make sure. Ah, by the way, something I didn't say, uh, perspective. Make sure that your perspective is on. Uh, normally, by the way, a lot of people tend to ask which uh, uh, focal view you guys should use. Um, it's between 50 and 85, because normally that's, that's the portrait mode and we are kind of working mostly the face. I like working in 85 just because I eventually, in any other software, I normally play with 85. So that's that's up to you. If you guys don't know where are these values, are just here within draw, you will you will be able to see the camera the camera settings. And here you have all the values that the camera can have, right? So you can see that the perspective change depending on, on the focal length that you have. So right now I'm going to play with 85. So yeah, it's up to you guys, but between 50 and 85 is just fine for us, Colton. Yeah, actually we had a question from uh, Shubham Gupta. What's your perspective camera value just like a few minutes ago? Cool, answered. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Cool. And also there's a question from Carlos. The UI preferences are going to be shared. Uh, I'm not sure, huh? That's quite the not U, that... U, 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 UI preference, you mean the UI, you know, the whole interface or... Um, like that's not my question, <laughs> but I think uh, the Carlos is asking about your interface. Yes. Um, well, so. well, my interface, well, I mean, it has a whole bunch of different elements that I have gathered over the years. Um, some brushes are not mine or brushes have created myself. Some bits are from, I don't know. It, I, I will explain some elements from the interface as much as they are needed, but it's, it's not so relevant because at the end of the day, you guys will be creating your own interface. Um, it's pretty much just whatever you guys are getting more use, but feel free if there is anything that you don't know what's going on here on the interface, feel free to ask and I will try to reply. It, okay. Feel free to ask it. Cool. All right. So I'm going to start already building some fewer shapes. So I just make a little bit of the, of the ear. So now I'm going to make sure that they look more like a rabbit. So let me just put them up a little bit. So they look more rabbitish type of thing. Cool. And I kind of like the, 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 the shape, but now this is one of the tricks that I want to show you guys. Since we are focusing on the silhouette, there is one very nice trick within ZBrush is the fact that here you have a flat color material. And what is the flat color material? It's pretty much a, a way that is not showing any light information. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to deactivate in my character all the all the poly painting, so it's this icon here. And now I will be able to see the just the silhouette of it. So by just making this, I will be able just to focus on the forms as a silhouette. So right now my character is extremely dull. I mean, it has no personality, it has nothing. So let me just show you quickly what I will do. I will just create maybe a layer here on the layer. I will just create a new layer. And then I will just try just to give it a, little, a little bit more of personality, even, even just by here. I can tell that there is so much that I, I should be able to, to accomplish, you know? So by doing this, I will be able to create stuff that just by having the shade on it, I, I won't be able to see. So there is a very nice way to kind of kind of create your character, you know? Okay, now let me just activate it back again. Let me come back to the skin blend material. Let me just see before and after. And yeah, even help. So. Every time you, you feel like lost within your sketching, try to focus on the major forms, try to focus on the silhouette. Some people even suggest the stuff like, for example, seeing your skull by, like backward, upside down, sorry, upside down, and just try to improve it from there, or even seeing your, your skull from the distance. So if by the distance, the skull still works, it's a good news. If by the distance, the skull is, the skull, the, the sculpt, is dull, so it means that it needs still some tweak involved. So I'm going to keep the like the new shape that I gave. I'm going to bake it since I, I want it. I want my new information. And I'm just going to probably start working on the body. So as you can tell, this was from uh, coming from a sphere. The school was coming from a sphere. The teeth were coming from boxes. We have the eyeballs that are spheres, and these were just cylinders. So. One thing that I try to explain all the time is the same thing that I did in the Stylized Character course, that uh, our hero Stylized Character course, is that don't dynamesh, don't don't get into detail, don't subdivide until you have all the shapes in place. And by that, just keep everything simple in primitives. So right now we have a cylinder that I'm going to start working as the body. 
I make sure my symmetry is on, I press X on my keyboard. And then now I'm going to start just moving things around and trying to see if I can get something cool here. Can I just thinking now that I want the guy with certain certain type of suit? I just I just start thinking now. Uh, I don't want my character just to be a, a normal rabbit. I want maybe the character you know Alice in Wonderland with this massive color. Um, that's very eye catchy because it's a stupid rabbit with a color. <laughs> so I, I feel like I probably all these tiny elements that break the silhouette they can help. So let me just try to, to, to try to do something going towards this direction you know and it should and it should feel it's still like a ghostish so i'm just going to give it a little bit of more like a type of ghosting pose from this step already and by the way let, let me just pull my my mood board quickly because there is one el two elements that i want to talk about uh, quickly. marlon and meanwhile you're doing that maybe you could reply quickly emilio's question uh could you yeah. repeat how do you watch the flat color model so for the yeah so, so sorry uh, emilio of course so for the flat color the only thing that you need to do make sure that your poly paint is off so turn off the brush icon that you have here under the sub tool and then just go here in the material and then just hit flat color and you'll be able to see all the information okay so mm -hmm. that's the way to do it. Right now, I can't even do it through the body exploration. But before getting there, I, I, I want to uh, just play a little bit with the shapes and then come back to the flat color. OK, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about colors. And uh, the reason why is that I'm I'm very big fan of bright colors in general. Myself, I have bright colors everywhere. I, I just like bright colors. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever played uh, like Grease, the video game, uh, which I recommend everywhere. And for me, Grease is a very good uh, like representation about with very simple shapes achieving something outstanding. And it's simple shapes and just the, the right gradient of colors or the right choice of colors because colors are emotions. So every time you're sculpting, don't think just about just bringing all you know all your gun power into sculpting because Eventually, you will be texturing and then rendering, which means that just by texturing, you can fix or improve things around. Or even even better, you don't you don't even think too much about sculpting by focusing on the texturing part. Uh, even from my point of view, texturing is probably sixty percent of the job. So sculpting is not as relevant as sculpting. Uh, sorry, uh, text sculpting is not as relevant as texturing because on texturing is where is where the material comes from. So you can even you can improve or even you can damage the whole character. Okay, so this is a video game, by the way. Download it all the way straight. Play it; it's beautiful. So I really want to focus with this type of aesthetics for this guy. Simple shapes and then playing with colors later on. So let me put my mood board already on the other screen. Any other question? Me while I doing this, let me just put it here. Yes, actually, there was one that I even pulled up. I uh, didn't want to interrupt you. So our Tom was asking if you change your workflow for stylized projects. No, all, all, all my stylized projects are always the same. I always divide everything in simple forms, and then I just I just start sculpting this way. Again, I don't mm -hmm. dynamize at this stage because I, I, I don't want it. Uh, million reasons. Imagine that I want to change stuff like, for example, the fifth position. So I would be able to even make the teeth even bigger if I feel like, or even to rotate it because they are not working in that position. Like I can do right. million things. So at this stage, it doesn't make any sense. So I really like to keep everything simple and and everything with simple primitives. Awesome. So, you, and then, yeah, I'm, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading. Uh, if Aaron is asking if I color texture in ZBrush. Exactly. Yes, I do. And, I'll, and actually I encourage you to create a little poly paint while you're sculpt, maybe not now, a little bit later, so you will be able to already start feeling the character somewhat. Um, we'll be able, we'll be doing that later on, okay? But right now, let's focus just on the shapes. All right, so um, yeah, so I was talking about the silhouette, this guy. So I feel like uh, this guy, I really want to break the silhouette. Also, I, I kind of feel like I want to have the floating head for now. I will see later if it makes any sense, and also. Uh, in in the mood board, well, I, don't, I don't I have in my other screen. Um, since the guy is going to be a ghost, uh, I don't want to emphasize so much on the on the legs, but mostly the arms, like the arm, because 
he's going, it's not like he's going to be floating, but let's say the legs are not so relevant. So I want to focus mostly on the arms because he's going to be doing something probably. So I need to make sure that I really establish how the upper torso is going to be looking like, right? So right now with the torso, I'm like, uh, hmm, I don't know. So I'm going to move on. I'm just going to create one cylinder and let's, let's start talking about arms. So let me just position the arms in place. So I got to scale down. This is going to be the bicep. The, so the biceps. So I'm just going to go here, kind of play it, place it in position, scale it up a little bit here. And then I'm going to create a forearm. Control, move. It's going to duplicate the subtool within the same subtool. Then I'm going to rotate and then I'm going to place the arm here. You know what, let me just place it more like this. I think like this is nicer. And I'm going to keep it like this for now. And the cool thing is that right now, bo uh, both of them are completely two different subtools. If I just go ahead and make an auto groups, you will see that there are two different subtools. So by just uh, like, for example, masking, if I click Control Shift and I mask, control on the canvas and I mask one of those and can play already the form. So for example, here I can already start playing with the forearm shape. So the, the forearm is already kind of uh, getting some shape. I have already here where it could be the elbow. Here I have the, the intersection of the of the biceps against the against the, um, the brachioradialis. I mean, all this anatomy stuff really slightly bit boring. I don't want to talk much about anatomy, but just giving a little bit of forms. And here I want to also to break these straight lines because one thing that is very important is that uh, life is is uh, organic. And by that, I mean that all your characters should be always organic. There should be some um, simplification in terms of the of how they are posed. So for example, stuff like the body, I always try to go for like a, this type of shapes. Stuff, for example, like the arms, I will just try to to do exactly the same. I will try to make sure that there is some, some arcing or some type of curve involved. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to make sure that, uh, let me just pull it here and then just pull something like this. And right now this arm has slightly more personality, which is great. Uh, um, Marlon, there is a relevant okay. question, so I'm just going to uh -huh. pull it up here. Uh, mm -hmm. Shubham is asking uh, how to create a good understanding of silhouette. And actually, there is a follow-up question about uh, good mm -hmm. practice of learning silhouette. Do you have any tips on that? Yeah, there is there is one way. It's like a old methodology that I learned once. Uh, let me just try to open Photoshop. Um, the, normally, when I'm sketching, when I'm when I'm trying to explore a character, mostly when I'm doing 2D, uh, because I still do 2D very very readily, but I, I do it. One second, guys, let me just show you quickly. There you go. So there is, when I was in, in the university, there is one teacher that can explain us something I really like. And and, it's, and it helps quite a lot in terms of uh, silhouetting and also sketching silhouettes. Um, I don't use it so much often when I'm sketching 3D, but it can be very useful. Um, so what I normally will do, I will divide the whole grid in different parts, and then I will start just doing random lines around, just like that, really, with not, without getting anywhere. And make sure that the lines make no sense, OK? So and then I will just make sure that it's kind of like the layer is kind of not so, you know, not so obvious. And the cool thing here is that just by doing this, you can already start exploring. Um, you know, human brain normally tries to give, like, shapes that we know to anything so we will be able to kind of start understanding like uh like some shapes and kind of relate to certain animal or like uh doing just like funky stuff you know you kind of start exploring certain certain animal sources whichever shapes you know and you just can't get crazy you kind of start just just doing whole bunch of weird stuff you know that is really um, cool huh and i think that kind of relates uh we had a question going on today in uh the monster challenge group um a few people were had a discussion about where to get inspiration from and i think that you know could also answer the question like as of you know one of methodologies how to just start doodling 
Yeah, I don't know if you guys, uh, I mean, there, there is a name, there's a scientific name that where when you are watching clouds and you're already giving a shape or a story about the cloud that I think it's called like anima, anima something, when you were trying to give life to an animated, uh, you know, objects. Um, I think this kind of goes on that. Your brain just try to just make a puzzle out of nowhere. And, and really, that sometimes it helps. Let's say 80% of the time, maybe you don't get anywhere, but maybe sometimes you just find stuff that is just like so relevant and then, and, and then it just come out of nowhere, you know? Cool. Yeah. And I don't know. This probably is a technique that uh, it's most relevant for 2D. For 3D, it's more like uh, volumes. But that's the reason why I, I use the flat color within ZBrush. So I make sure that I'm able to focus in these type of shapes, you know, like I just, just the silhouette, just simplifying everything in a way that, you know, it's like a, as simple as possible. You know? Anyway, I don't want to get too crazy because I'm horrible to the artist. So otherwise you guys will be laughing at me. So let's, let me just keep focusing on, on this fella. But yeah, th there is a way. So there is a way of a sketch just out of nowhere, you know? And you will surprise yourself and also your brain, how crazy it can get or how creative it even can get when you just try to get like, to solve those lines. Um, Sometimes you can get like a very interesting spot. So it's a, it would be an interesting solution for you guys trying to trying to go this direction. So right now I'm just going to do the uh, the hand of the of the rabbit. Um, for it, most of the times uh, hands I always approach the same way, no matter which project. So you guys saw that I started from a sphere. So let me just rotate a little bit the hand. Maybe something like this. And now I'm going to create the fingers. Fingers, a lot of people are kind of struggling with it. And then I'm going to show you how I do it. I think it's the best approach to do fingers because it makes everything just faster. So I'm just going to get one cylinder. I'm just going to quickly isolate everything. Make sure the cylinder is almost like this. And then I'm just going to go hit control, put it here. I'm going to move the gizmo down. I'm going to move this guy like this. Hit control back again, make another duplicate, and then like this. And now, let me just move it even closer. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead. And now in this case where you probably want to dynamesh the whole thing. So in this case, I will dynamesh it. So if you go through geometry under the tool panel, you will come here to dynamesh and then just dynamesh it. Uh, by default, the resolution is, is way too big. I feel like I want to crank it very down. Uh, so it's very simplistic, something like this. And now here is where instead of the sculpting, again, I don't want to sculpt, I just want to move the silhouette. I just going to, I just going to um, smooth it out some shapes. So for example, I'm going to smooth out shapes like this one, for example, to be able to help the finger shape to define it slightly better. I'm sure this can be very useful for you guys uh, when, when you're creating your own hands. Um, because I, I tried a million approaches and really uh, there was nothing better than this, really. Marlon, uh, talking me. about like beginner approaches, um, uh -huh. there's a really quick question. Um, I've never 3D sculpted in my life. Is it mm -hmm. something I'm going to grasp fairly quickly or can I expect mm -hmm. not to be able to create anything, anything for a long time? What do you think? Well, I, I mean, personally, it doesn't work like that because... Um, as I said before, um, I mean, any profession or anything, any hobby that meanwhile you like it, you, you're going to get there. It's like, it's like say, anyone saying that they cannot play the guitar because at the end of the day, it's more about just putting some hours on it. Believe me, uh, being an artist is not necessarily about, you know, like being creative because the creativeness goes along the way. Uh, you can get creative just from watching a movie or you can get creative just from literally just traveling around the world. So don't worry about the technique because it's something that you will learn. Uh, there, are, uh, there are courses, I mean, uh, you can have mentors, there are a million ways, uh, but th there is nothing better than just train, train and put hours behind it. So believe me, uh, anyone can get into, into sculpting, into 3D in a very high end level. But you think it's, it's possible to many hours like... you put. Yeah, but you think it's possible to do something pretty quickly? I mean, not at like super professional level, but just like at least some achievement like uh like like a small sculpt well um i, I just like your first for example, monster the, for example yeah in the, in the last challenge i remember there was one girl that literally never used zbrush in her life 
uh, the, let's say the boyfriend was a 3D artist and she, he wanted her to... Um, yeah, to, to give it a uh, shot. I remember the, the story. And yeah, to get into the beautiful, into ZBrush. Yeah. So in, nice. in this challenge, I created a full mini course within five days, literally sculpting from zero to here in just five days. And, and, and I might tell you guys her, her outcome, I mean, her final sculpt for from literally knowing nothing and, and five, in five days having a render piece, it's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that it, it took me probably a year when, when I started. Uh, how come she was able to do it? I mean, probably she was hyper motivated. That, that was the only explanation that I have. Um, I mean, that's probably help, that helps quite a lot. So I, I would really just recommend you uh, just, just get into it, like it, don't hate it. <laughs> it, can be, it can be very stressful, don't hate it. And you will slowly, uh, you will slowly start getting somewhere. But mostly, uh, probably at the beginning, start with projects that are very simplistic. Don't, don't start doing like a crazy faces or this kind of stuff. And from my point of view, monsters, creatures, is probably the best approach because there is no anatomy involved. There is no like, like craziness involved. You can get as creative as possible. And even the character that I'm showcasing you, as you can tell, is very simple. It's something that you guys can do for sure. You guys even can watch this repetition and just try to replicate it as well. Um, so I really encourage you guys just to give it a try. I mean, just just love the process. Again, just love the journey. So as you, uh, I, I was doing the finger while, while I was kind of just talking about it. Uh, the fingers are slightly, you know, like a zombie on the position and, you know, like stuff. But um, I will see later what I do with the fingers. Maybe the fingers are way too too creepy for the guy. I don't know. I will see later. But for now, I'm just going to place them and just keep exploring the character, really. And as you can tell, we did the hand in pretty much no time. We didn't need, like, uh, to, to use any, you know, in any reference or anything. As you can tell, we already have a very nice simple shape of a hand. If I go to my flat color, I think it's quite obvious that it's a hand. Let me just do quickly one thing. I, go, I want to move this finger slightly outwards so the distance is similar. And I want to also to move this guy slightly down here so it makes more sense. There you go. Let me just get my skin bleed material. That is the one that I use all the time. As you're doing this, Martin, I'm actually going to ask the crowd, like, guys, whoever is listening to us now, is everything clear? Give us a little bit of thumbs up so that we know that you're still there. Um, there is a lot of people across platforms. So uh, just, uh, you know, and um, if something is not clear, give us a shout out. But uh, uh, also would be helpful to know if you find it, um, like, easy at this point, you know? Just uh, let's see, um, you know, if, if you find it easy to follow and everything is cool. Yeah. So give us um, a thumbs up. Cool. So uh, okay, cool. I just kind of work in the shape. As you can tell, I just with very small movements and just really getting a very nice shape here. And to be fair, I don't want to really get so far in it, but mostly just get the, the feeling of the hand already. So you guys, you guys have already like a, some kind of, you know, like, Hand. So right now I'm just going to merge down the hand and the fingers. Oh, it's okay. And I'm going to merge down now the arms and the hands as well. And what I'm going to do is just do the mirror of the whole thing. Mirror it and then just boom. And now I have already some type of rabbit already almost in the A pose. So now we can keep exploring it. Um, so in terms of the, of, the, of the legs, I don't want to emphasize so much on the legs. In fact, you know what? I probably see the, the arms too big. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure symmetry is activated. I'm going to make sure my gizmo is not rotated. So Alt click here, it will kind of reset the gizmo position. I'm going to click Alt that is going to unlock the gizmo position and just place it here on the deltoid where is the elbow, elbow, no, the, the shoulder area. And I just go, you know what? I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. About, wait a second, I think I have a mask here happening. Let me just make sure that there you go. So I'm just going to scale it down, put it back in position. I think so. I think this this makes more sense here. And you know, this shape for me doesn't make too much sense. I'm going to play more with the silhouette here. So I'm just going to give probably this type of shape. Now this makes more sense, you know? I'm going to give this type of shape now. I'm going to move now. Up, really, I'll just get a little bit up. 
a little bit more here, a little bit more here. Yeah, something like this should be enough. Uh, right now, I'm not so sure if I want to do the connection. I kind of feel like I want floating arms as well because we are talking about a, <laughs> about a ghost, but I will see later. Um, I want to start really giving some poly painting to it just, just, just because. So I'm just going to give a little bit of super white school color to the to the school shape. I want to activate back again my my um, my eyeballs, and now everything else is going to have a darkish color for now until I decide to change that later on. I don't know, but I want to already start feeling the character slightly more fanta, you know, at least more more ghostish. A little bit so it looks more zombie we need to get probably activate the cuteness <laughs> the cuteness modifier on it and and probably because of the hands probably the hands are not like a like amazing by the way this guy is missing the thumb so what i'm going to do quickly i'm just going to delete what i did i'm going to delete it and then i'm just going to quickly just make sure that Epa. that's going to mirror it uh one second i think maybe it's not yeah Go ahead, mirror. Let me make sure it's happening. Okay, now it's happening. Okay, cool. All right. Um, how we can make the whole thing cuteness? I think the cutest element in a rabbit. I think we all or most of all agree it's maybe the tail. <laughs> so I think I'm going to give some empowerment to the tail just because I think it's very cute. Uh, and maybe can help the guy to don't feel so, you know, so evilish. Because again, I want I want the rabbit to be naive and, and cute. I don't want him to be evil. I want him to be cute. He's just a ghost, a stupid ghost. Maybe he's just looking for a carrot and then he just got killed by accident when the, <laughs> I don't know, he just got killed by accident. I know every night he's going there just to pick his carrot. So yeah, I think he's going towards that direction now. Let me, let me make sure the tail is slightly more whitish. You know what? I'm going to make the fingers slightly fatter. I think that is going to help quite a lot. I'm going to get the inflate brush. By the way, if you go here in the in the brush palette, you will see that every brush um, I start with a letter, obviously. So every time you press a letter, you're going to pretty much, you know, shrink the list of brushes to all all of this. So what I did before, I just open, I just click. Well, I just click B that open the the brush palette. I just click I that is inflate. And then I just click inflate here. So inflate what it does, so you guys know, inflate what it does is just that it just inflates the mesh. Um, duh. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly just inflate a little bit more, more this guy, so he's slightly cuter. And you know what? I'm just going to make, um, just going to inflate the whole thing. Marlon, so um, yeah. Do we have space for two questions? Meanwhile, you're sculpting. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, we've got a bunch of questions. Sorry, guys, it's just like Marlon talks a lot, and I yeah, I don't yeah. always want to interrupt him. So, uh, question from Eric: Do you ever um, start with a two D drawing outside of ZBrush, bring it into ZBrush, and start sculpting with it as your silhouette? Um, it happened. Yeah. It happened on the past. Yeah, it happened. I, I normally don't do. I normally like the sketching feeling of things. So, literally, what I'm doing right now. But I have had I have done that on the on the past, but mostly yeah mostly just ZBrush sketching the way the way you see right now guys. Okay, and then uh, um, do you recommend sculpting? Um, sorry, I'm just like directly translating from Spanish, but we're running this in English. So do you recommend sculpting uh, flex fingers or almost straight ones? F flex ones. And, and the reason why is because later on we're going to be posing the character. And I think by default, the hand is never like this. Even a post character like this, where is the camera here? Uh, I mean, it makes no sense. And it's going to be annoying to the viewer. So again, we need to think always about the future, how we're going to present the character. Um, so make sure always you, you get in the neutral pose that is like this, that is a relaxed pose more than the neutral pose. And, and from there, you will realize what you do. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's my personal decision. It's not like obviously compulsory, but I think it it's, it helps later on when posing. And at this time of the process, are you already thinking of possible final pose? That's actually another question from Kim. 
Um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, here I have a uh, uh, like a problem because since he's a ghost and I want to use this Fresnel and this transparency, one of the things that I was thinking is that this guy. Let me just show you show you something quick, something cool. So if I I, I want to play some inner elements. So one of the things that I wanted to do, I wanted to create a little heart here. So if I press Control T, you will be able to see this guy like in ghost, uh, like in the ghost mode in ZBrush. Um, you can see this by transfer transformation. Sorry, ghost. Okay. And the cool thing here is that I feel like I want to start adding some elements here. So in terms of post production, um, it's not so much post production, but which type of render engine I'm going to use to render it. Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, really. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use ZBrush MPR. I'm going to get into Marmoset. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to take that decision later on. Right now, I'm exploring just the shape of it. I, I might try everything. <laughs> I might try everything. I don't know. But um, yeah, good question. I don't know, really. That's a very good question. But I'm already thinking that I, I might will add some elements inside his body. So. Even if we see the shape of the of the ghost, we still see something going on. Maybe he's eating the carrot, and you can see half of the carrot <laughs> broken inside in the stomach. It would be fun, actually. Like the, the carrot just got like a ghostish, and then you already see the process just going around the intestine. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> interesting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And my artist minds are crazy. Yeah. Know. So Shubham anyway. was co commenting if every concept character needs story, like you just created a story for this rabbit. You do. Oh yeah, you do because you already think on the presentation. Uh, you know, w once I had this teacher. Um, he was teaching uh, texturing. I remember, and he says something that for me is so important. Every time you are texturing, you need to explain uh, the context of the of, of the material. So let's say, if your I don't know your character is on the desert, I mean, he should have some dust. He should have some scratches maybe from the rocks. He should have these you know elements. Uh, how old it is he's been there in the desert for years he just arrived i mean everything everything it, it needs an explanation so when you take a character you need to make sure that in one single image you are able to express like a, some emotion or something and by that the only way is doing storytelling so by storytelling it's about just in one single image you you, you pose it with certain type of illumination and you bring some emotions to the viewer. So, so yeah, the, the answer is, is yes, I'm already thinking about how I want it. Uh, I know I want him in some type of dead forest, dark, darkish, and he's kind of glow, glowy animal, glowy spirit hunting for carrots just by himself there. So yeah, I kind of feel like he's going towards that direction. Very naive, he doesn't know he's dead. He's just going around there, just catching carrots. Yeah. So yes, you need you need a story definitely. So so yeah, I, I think more or less I, I I as you can tell I start scaling down the body. I felt that the cuteness was being very killed by by the length of everything. And as you can tell, I'm still no dimension. My body is still super simplistic. I don't want to get too crazy on it. Um, maybe I can already start thinking about you know breaking a little bit more the shape of it. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can start smoothing out some shapes here. Um, no, but I want the costume. I still want to to have something. Maybe he can he can wear something. Maybe he can wear something like a bandana or something when he carry all the carrots. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe he's carrying all the carrots that he's picking up in a some type of no bandana. I say wrong in English. Uh, some type of like a bag or something. Um, yeah, let's do that. It's kind of weird, but yeah. Let's let's get something here where he's carrying the carrots. He's he's wearing a little bag everywhere he goes. Again, guys, we're exploring. We are not like uh, doing any detailing or anything. We are just literally just going around and just trying to to get the mood of of the whole thing, trying to to get some some context, trying to. You know to enjoy this part of the process and i'm telling you one thing every single artist that i know this is the part this is the part that they mostly enjoy uh detailing and rendering probably they don't enjoy it as much as literally just sketching around and literally just literally just getting crazy you know um i'm just going to do something stupid here i'm just going to imagine that these are carrots 
Um, let me just make sure this is on. Imagine there's a carrot here. And then I'm just going to. I'm just so, here so, to pull up some more comments. Uh, Sarah yeah. is saying that this is getting crazy cute. Cannot agree more. And cool. yeah, uh, yeah, thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, and Leo, uh, I think that's our hero student, actually, if I remember correctly. Hi, Leo. Um, he's asking if you're using a concept art or just straight from your head. Well, you explained straight it from the my beginning. Head. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know if you saw, let me just pull the mood board back again, um, Leo. Uh, so I, I gathered all these references here, literally. I gathered all these references. And as I said before, I want to make sure that I get this goatish, ghostish feel. So I'm already kind of following towards this direction, but I want to make sure that I get some of the key elements that I wanted. So I want some school shape rabbit still being cute. Um, yeah, I, I want something small. I think I want something small, so I kind of try to go for a smaller body now. Um, so yeah, I'm not I not literally copy anything. I just I just just getting creative within the process. So yeah, just 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 full my my brain just getting crazy right now. And I really encourage you guys. So part part of the rules is actually that you don't you don't uh, like uh, copy a um, a concept. It should be your idea. So get Create, get creative, get some references, but just you know, enjoy the process. Just let your brain dictate what what you do. So I'm going to merge down these two because right now it feels like maybe the back can be instead of the there, it can be just here. It can be maybe smaller. Nah, let's put it on the way it was. Kind of feels like it's not working now. Maybe. I want I want him to wear something that breaks the maybe he, maybe he can wear a poncho. Oh yeah, everybody loves ponchos. I do love ponchos. So let me just put something like this. I'm going to get here. I'm going to make by polygroup. That's like a weird way to do ponchos. And I'm going to show you a trick that I just learned just recently. I mean, using the new ZBrush feature. Um, let me just go to polygroup uh, polygroup by normals, and I'm just going to kill. All of this is going to be like the initial punch of type of thing, right? So I just tried to put it in. One and more question, to... actually. I don't see go who's ahead. that, but uh, I think I delete. Is yeah. it better yeah, to go ahead. symmetry in this part? Say it again. Uh, is it better to keep symmetry in this part? In this part? Part? Meaning, like at this point of sculpting, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all the way, all the way. Um, it's it's very important because uh, it will allow you to kind of and, and you know take more decisions because otherwise you will need to duplicate every single decision that you take. Uh, if you make a change in the arm and the guy's already posed or something, unless your character is fully asymmetrical, which is not my case. I want to have a normal character um, with certain level of asymmetry. I will be breaking the symmetry later on with the um, um with the with the pose obviously so i'm going to do something just quickly uh, i'm just going to smooth this this out and i'm just going to quickly make sure that my symmetry is activated and then i'm just going to make a c remeasure a uh, very quick c remeasure but that's way too Low? Yeah, because we're probably um, close to running out of time today i mean we exactly. still have another sculpting right. session um like in let, a let me of just days. show you. Let me just kind of showcase what I wanted to show, just just quickly. Sure, just sure. I mean, place. yeah, we still have the, some the, time, the, but not a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. Imagine that you have like a certain. Uh, let me just activate this. Oh, what happened here? Ah, classic ZBrush problem. Okay, whatever. I, imagine that you have like some clothes that you already created. And one of the cool things about the last ZBrush, oh my God, let me just make sure another ZBrush measure. Okay. One of the cool things about ZBrush is about the, the new clothes um, brushes, which I found super cool. So right now, for example, if you want, if you need to create uh, um, creases and folds, you will, need, you will need to sculpt them, right? So what I'm doing lately, I just go to my clothes brush that you can find here. I'm going to make sure, 
let, let me save because this can be take a little bit. Let me just go ahead. Just one second, guys. I'm just going to save it quickly before it's too private. So I'm just going to get here, deactivate the symmetry, and then I'm going to move this guy a little bit down. And what you notice is that it's going to start creating me some cool creases around. And you will see that it's actually falling on top of whatever it is. So right now, it's not, it's not following completely. Well, whatever. But in any scenario, if you guys want to create clothing, maybe this, this is a very nice, fast way to do it. As you can tell, I, I'm already kind of getting some kind of coolish uh, folds out of nowhere. And just by pulling things around, you know? So it can be interesting for you guys just to give it a, a try. Let me just move this out. Let me try again. There you go. That is interesting. Yeah. And then just pull this guy down back again. So yeah, something like this can be fine. Like, let me just make it more asymmetrical, this, this puncher. Let me just make sure that it's like a, yeah, something like this for now. And let me pull it lower here, smooth it out. Lower like this, pull it like this. Yeah, I'm going to keep it like this for now. And I will see later what I, what to do with the legs. But yeah, this, this is a trick that I'm doing right now. Every time that I need to tweak slightly the, like uh, the folds, I like to get the cloth and then just kind of play with it to see if I can create some nice folds around the area. Very, very interesting brush. I really recommend you to start giving it a try and a test, you know? Very interesting brush. All right, Maria, so I think um, this, this is pretty much one hour. It makes one hour. It totally does. It totally does. Okay. So um, how is everyone, guys? Uh, how did you find the session today? Let's hear some let's hear some noise, everyone. <laughs> or at least at least some um, I don't know, like uh, happy and happy neutral emojis. Just uh, um, you know, let us know how was the session, maybe um, ideas of what you want to hear in the future. Well, it's not like we're going to do what you <laughs> would just say now because we've got the challenge program <laughs> and uh, we will actually pretty much follow the program, but we definitely can answer everybody's questions. Good, good, good. Yes. Um, yes. Fun. It was great. Thank you, people. Helpful. Uh, thanks for this lesson. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And uh, wow. Yeah. We had so many um, of you guys. Yeah, I, I really hope that you guys find this crowd. useful. And, and mostly, I think the, the major idea here is that just simplify everything. Don't get into details. Don't do any dynamesh. Just try to feel the character just within within the context, you know, and just with simple shapes. Later on in, in the next uh, part of the process, once we, we kind of start, you know, like a, you know, detailing or anything, we'll be able to start, you know, you know, breaking up and, you know, like changing things maybe along the way. But right now, I just keep it simple. That's very important. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, thanks for this, Marlon. So, guys, uh, now, before I actually move to um, to the final section of this uh, little workshop, which is actually the prize and uh, sending the cap, um, I'm oh. going to announce homework. <laughs> so, the homework for tomorrow is pretty simple. So you get to try some of the sketching and it doesn't matter how far you progress, right, Marlon? We can post mood boards, yeah. we can post just like some small sketches. Does it work? I will I, I, I would say ZBrush stuff. I mean, mood boards are <laughs> fine, but mood boards are for, for each of them individually. I, yeah. I will just start showcasing where they got just by simple forms, just basic shapes, get something done. Okay, awesome. So um, get your sketches together and just take a screenshot of whatever we have, just one image. Mm -hmm. And when you go to Monster Challenge Group, uh, you see units section so that everything is not scattered around. Uh, you have the unit section and our team has already uploaded um, a thread there where you can just post a comment with your um, 
screenshot and also answer a question what's the most challenging for you if it's actually just starting just you know explain that it's starting and the simple shapes if it's silhouette it's silhouette just explain what do you find the most struggling in this pro in this project if it's actually already like i don't know next level and uh, you're thinking of the better way of presenting it maybe it's that just like talk to everybody about your you know like the, the the type of struggle that you're seeing here and what do you think could be the most challenging in this specific uh, project so uh yeah so unit section of the group um it's gonna be we're gonna be looking at that and uh, uh there is a, actually a deadline for this it's uh, 4 p.m london time or 8 a.m california time so pst um and we're going to close comments after this. And from everybody who posted, we're going to choose um, another prize tomorrow. So tomorrow the deadline is just one hour before the streaming. And um, yeah, and uh, and tomorrow actually, Marlon, that's not you, right? Tomorrow we're having Martin. I okay, think. Martin, yeah. And yes, Martin, all right. AK Monster Boy. Verhoeven. Exactly, yeah. Martin he, is a he's super the monster, monster dude to ask questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's so, a monster dude. Absolutely, absolutely. Martin developed this absolutely amazing 3D printing program for uh, with us, with our heroes. And uh, um, yeah, we absolutely love it. But uh, he's definitely the monster uh, champion. So uh, now I'm just, you know, like uh, launching my uh, super randomizer bear with me for one second and uh um let me see who is gonna get who's gonna get the um the prize so are we ready for uh the drum roll yeah oh yeah, yeah. okay fine so um <laughs> Okay, fine. So let's see if the person is still online. Uh, it's Leah Dervin. Leah, are you still online? Uh, Le Leah has to say yes, otherwise. Yeah, Leah has to <laughs> say yes. We have a little delay here. We have a little delay. Um, so I'm just going to wait a few uh, seconds. And well, our team is contacting Leah now. So Leah Dervin, uh, that's that's you today, uh, the super lucky person. And uh, um, yeah, so yeah, okay, awesome. So uh, now we know who's the, the the next owner of the cap, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, congrats, Leah. Good job. <laughs> now, the next step is posting whips, and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. We're going to have another uh, raffle tomorrow. Uh, Marlon, are you going to be working on the rabbit meanwhile? Just uh, wondering. Yeah, I will be. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm going to be working on it a little bit. Uh, hopefully, by Wednesday, I have something slightly more polished. And then uh, we can already start moving on detailing on Wednesday. Okay. Final note, Sarah says that she actually really likes the lack of legs. Uh, like maybe just uh, another comment of Sarah, maybe just uh, have legs, just the misty ghost bottom. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. I thought about it too. I'm, I'm, I'm right now just like, yeah, I don't know. I also feel like I'm probably better without legs. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just do okay. That. Okay, cool. All righty, guys. Thanks so much, everyone. We're going to post this um to your um, email box and you can watch this replay. Marlon, thanks so much. Appreciate you being yeah. here, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, I mean, amazing. I th thanks everyone for asking questions. I, I, I really hope that mostly for you, that feels brush that is such a scary, you know, like software with the interface and everything, uh, then you realize that everything is very simplistic when you have the right methodology. So that's very important, just having the right methodology and just trying to implement it. So I, I hope that you can find it useful, yeah. 100%, 100%. Okay, guys, see you tomorrow. Same time, okay. same place. See ya. Ciao. Cheers. Bye.